Point that Chris Hayes made and Ben Howe made from Red State, they're both in agreement uh, that they're telling Ben Howe is telling people, his conservative friends, to vote for Hillary if they care about the the safety or the uh, the life of the Republican Party and the conservative movement. Because if Donald Trump is president, it wrecks it, and they won't be able to get uh, a governing majority. He said for maybe decades. So you can vote for Hillary Clinton. I'm going to vote for the destruction of the Republican Party, as according to Chris Hayes and Ben Howe. Well, I think Chris Hayes would tell you to vote for Hillary Clinton. And ben I know, Howe. but he's going against his own logic. I, I, I don't think he is. I suspect that maybe you're just misinterpreting what he's saying. Do I think that uh, Donald Trump is bad for the conservative party? I mean, the conservative movement? Yes. I think he's bad for the conservative movement, whether he wins or loses. Is it bad for the Republican Party if he wins? I'll tell you what happens if he wins. What he w- wins is like people like Ben Howe lose. They lose his, their job. But there are other people who, who win. And those people will continue on and they will just continue. It's not like the Republican Party is going to say, oh, what's become of us? I mean, look at the way they're reacting now. Yes, I, I, I agree. So in my, my, my ideas, just let me clarify that idea of people coalescing. I mean that if Hillary Clinton is president, like right now, Barack Obama's president, he's pushing the TPP, which you pointed out, a lot of Democrats are against, right? Right. Uh, yet, yet there's a chance he still might get it through, which is why he's pushing for it, because he knows there's a chance. Well, so he's no, he, pushing he it. wants it to go through. That's why he's yeah. pushing it. He knows right. that it's in trouble. That's why he's having to uh, to work so hard. And frankly, I, I, I think that um, I think there's plenty of evidence that it's not going to happen, uh, the very least on his watch. Yeah, that's good news. Right. So, yes, y- y- you know. Yeah, so my point is he, he, he helped split the opposition. Like, the Democrats are like, wait a minute, my Democrat president's for this. This is some horrible right-wing policy, though. That's what I've been told, but he's for it. So it splits the, if, if it was a Republican proposing this, all the Democrats would coalesce, all the independents. If it was a Republican thing- proposing this, it would have passed already because they control both <laughs> houses of Congress, and it would have passed. Okay, I hear what you're saying. I, I I would I, I my theory. Do you I refute that? Do I refute that? It would have if the president, the if, the, if if it was George Bush or Donald Trump right now, and you had a Republican Senate and a Republican House, that the TPP wouldn't pass. The reason why the why? the reason why the TPP is not going to come up for a vote in the lame duck session is because it's Obama trade. Right. So you're saying the Republicans don't want to be seen going along with anything Barack Obama does. Right. So you're saying that a Democrat pushing the TPP is a good is not as bad as a Republican pushing the TPP. So we should vote Democrat. Well, I don't think Hillary Clinton's going to push the TPP. Honestly. Yeah. I think it's too wow. toxic for her at this point. I think there's too many people in the Democratic Party who are going to do it. And frankly, if you have a Republican-controlled Senate and House, yes, it's better for a Democrat to push the TPP because they're not going to give Hillary Hillary trade either. They're going to follow so, the exact same strategy they followed with Obama, which is obstruct. So in the okay, same well, dynamic that prevented Barack Obama from cutting Social Security benefits because the Republican Party wouldn't go along with him, and then ultimately... The Democratic Party got strengthened and they completely changed their uh, their position on it by 180 degrees. That is what I expect that dynamic to continue. Yes, I remember when George Bush also proposed uh, privatizing Social Security and it was dead on arrival because. Well, privatizing Social Security is far more extreme than than simply cutting benefits. Right, right. But but, I, but I, I'm in so favor you, of expanding benefits, and the Democratic Party is now, that's the official position of the Democratic Party and all of the Democrats in the Senate. Right. Did you know since Hillary, uh, since Bernie endorsed her, Hillary stopped talking about climate change in her speeches? You know, she's exporting fracking around the world. She says the Republicans don't accept the science of climate change. She says she does. And we all know the science says that fracking is way worse for climate change than anyone believes. 
and yet here she is exporting it. So that's the kind of thing that double speak that people can't give their vote to. I can't give my vote to that, Sam. So you're gonna you're going to enable the guy who thinks that climate change is a hoax because you think that's gonna get us further down the line. No, no, I, I, I say it's time for a revolution and we have to throw off the, uh, the neoliberal agenda, which is pro-fracking, which is anti-climate change and anti-science. And, you know, we are going to have to, you know, we are going to have to right now. Do you think Donald Trump to... would have, uh, would have um, okayed uh, the um, uh, Keystone Pipeline? Uh, yes. Me too. Do you think Donald yes, Trump I... will do that when he gets into office? Uh, yes. I think he'll uh, do all the bad things you can think of. I think so that why that, would you not you know, we, even want we had to, to why would you <laughs> not want to put someone in who's in position who is going to be relying on your votes to get reelected, who's going to have to address Bernie Sanders as a powerful senator in her own party? Why would you not want that person who is closer to even if you think that she's a horrible human being? who is going to continue to uh, wreck the planet, and you and I, uh, maybe we agree on that. Why would you not want that person in charge because they are accountable, more accountable to Bernie Sanders and Bill McKibben and to um, uh, the Democrats in the House who are against these things than Donald Trump, who could give F all about those people and, in fact, benefits politically from telling them to go F off. Right. And, there, and my reason is because I'm playing a longer game. I see us uh, we obstruct Trump. <clears throat> How for much two time years, do you think we have? Two years. <clears throat> two years. Two years. Two years. And then two years we flip. And by the way, and people are forgiving, you know, that they're going to be redoing the re gerrymandering based on the census that's coming up, right? Why so do you think the Democrats have... are going to control the state houses? Uh... No, they're not. That's what I'm, I'm saying. That what, you know, why do you. What's happened is that uh, when Barack Obama was president, that, you know, people vote against him. You know, a midterm election, it goes against the incumbency. So that's what people... More blame often me, than uh, not, you know. but not in 2002. Okay. So but my, my point being that uh, I don't think uh, a Democratic presidency uh, helps fix any of the problems we really need to fix. In fact, it makes a lot of them worse. And the Democrats got in bed with So Wall let me Street ask you them. this. If Bernie and Sanders was the nominee, Jimmy, would you continue yeah. to espouse this? Because, of course, this would mean the end of the Republican Party as we know it and the conservative movement. So would you, uh, would you also uh, not vote if Bernie Sanders was the nominee? No, because, because Bernie Sanders isn't a neoliberal. I'm saying that people don't realize what they're getting with Hillary is not the opposite But, but your, of theory, your theory of, of uh, Donald Trump is that the reason why you would enable his presidency is because it's going to destroy the conservative movement. I mean, so it, why, it, in its short term, I mean, why wouldn't, you, uh, why wouldn't you espouse this if it's only going to be two years and we can weather the storm and the, 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 the Democrats could... Why would, why, why, why would you support Bernie Sanders? Well, it's a risk assessment, right? So right now, if my choices are Donald Trump or neoliberal warmongering Hillary Clinton in bed with Wall Street frackers and the big pharma, I'm going to say the risk, I'll take that risk of Donald Trump destroying the Republican Party. But if I get a real progressive and that the country is behind and he can uh, uh, raise awareness and consciousness about what it means to be a real socialist, that we're the richest country the face of the earth has ever seen, and we can afford uh, universal health care and we can afford a college for everybody and we can regulate Wall Street and have a good economy, I'll take that bet. I'll, that's my risk assessment there. But if my risk assessment, my choices are Hillary and Donald, I'm going to bet a different risk. And so you you have uh, basically said that um, uh, you've basically said that the the Supreme Court is irrelevant in this assessment too, right? No, because no, I, because, you know, because, I, because let me just get this clear: said, because the Democrats are going to filibuster for two years, then the Democrats are going to take over. Hey, folks, Sam Cedar here. I just got back from a uh, company wide meeting. Accounting is really coming down on me hard. We need to get to a hundred thousand subscribers as soon as possible. So uh, please enjoy this uh, channel. Subscribe right up, right up, down. right down there.